<laughs> All right, so let's get into some interest rate predictions. Uh, let's see. I tagged Marcus Nece- Necessary, Adam Johnson, Melanie Hay. I don't know if they're watching the show live today. Um, Melissa uh, Clayton, you're on, so that's good. Dan and Ray. So we have your interest rate predictions from last year. Uh, oh. This Interestingly. Let's skip this segment. <laughs> <laughs> So let's recap what happened, right? So if you're watching, I'm actually good good with this segment. (laughs) Let's recap exactly what happened. So it looked like the economy towards the end of last year was just, I mean, blowing. I mean, it was awesome. Everything was rocking, low unemployment, um, high production, GDP. Everything was going pretty incredible in the U.S. And so we thought, hey, if this happens, the Fed's going to have to raise those rates because if it continues on the current track, then that's what they do. They raise the rates because they're what they have to do is maintain full employment and uh, they have to prevent inflation. That's their two part mandate. And so had everything stayed the same, I think probably some of these might be close. Uh, Adam Johnson predicted six and a half percent interest rate. Mark and necessary predicted five. Um, Oh wait, that was from, 2018 that was from 18 going to 19 yeah those from go where's our ones from 19 to dan predicted oh wait did you watch the wrong show dan no no no. keep going number four wait wait oh number four okay there it is so uh kevin benzinger i think he wins the award for the closest prediction 2.99 percent he said and i think we all poo-pooed him but, yeah, it was like, what? <laughs> no way, dude. Yeah, uh, Dan mentions the upcoming election, asks if, what the election year does to rates. Um, Ray says 3.25%. So let me look at the current, 3.25%. Yep, that's off. I mean, I have clients uh, closing at that, so it's not wrong. It's not wrong, but it's also not the standard. Like, you got to, I mean, at, at three, which is crazy talk to think at 3.25%, your credit's a little off, right? <laughs> Melissa said at 3.15%. She, I feel like she did the, you know, just just under me there. Clayton, she, she did the prices right thing. <laughs> he said, I think they will stay within 0.75% of where they are now. So, so Tim, you talk about vague. <laughs> I know, right? I, I know, want to know. That's, like that's a point. Down. Ding, right? So he said, <laughs> so it was at 3.75% then. So it was either three or four and a half. So right. that's, why, that's why Benzinger beat you by a tenth of a percent. Yeah. Uh, and then Dan predicted that they'll go up just under 4% and then back down to 3.75, ended up at 3.5. Yeah. So we were pretty well all incorrect as a matter of fact clayton added that it depends on who wins the election which is totally not right uh because no one could have predicted a worldwide pandemic uh well also though the reason i did put in 2018 to 19 yeah. is because we were really far we were off way off that people year. were predicting high to mid sixes 5.9 5.75 and they ended up at 375 or whatever, 3.5. So yeah. that's why I had those in there because we were way off. So this year, with all the madness and a global pandemic happening, to be off by 0. 0.75, uh, Clayton's prediction notwithstanding, I think that's pretty incredible. Yeah. The So the 30-year fixed rate currently, and we went to the Wells Fargo website and we used the interest rate in the first 30-year fixed rate category. That's what our standard is if you're – uh, watching this so and, and for wells you always go to wells always go to wells fargo just so we get the same number uh, and hopefully they don't go under so 2.5 percent is what it is currently so kevin benzinger wins the award for the closest interest rate pr- prediction at 2.99 percent but we are all within a percent ish right so that's yeah. terrible given a worldwide pandemic but the question is what what's what are they going to do now what's going to happen from here So if the Fed's mandate is to maintain full employment and also to prevent inflation, and they've dropped the the exchange rates to zero between banks, right? It's what the banks loan money from. They've dropped it to zero. Is it still a zero? Then, and we have a new administration coming in. What do you guys think is going to be the interest rate at the end of 2021? Do you have music for this for us to think? That's right. 
Uh, who's good? No, who's going first? Who's going who wants first? To go first? Who wants to jump in? Uh, you know what? Who, you know who jumped in? Bob Tompkins. Uh, he said one percent. One percent. He's also. I, mean, I, think, I think. I think it'll be the uh, same. Same where it's at right now. It's not going to change. Two you and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Right. Write it down. Write it down. Tim okay. Messi says two and a half percent. It'll be within two percent. <laughs> not, not, not being low three. like three one three two five like I'll, I'll go with three two five i think it's going to go up a little bit i think we're gonna have a lot of inventory come on the market i think it's still going to be a strong market for sellers um but it's, uh, it's got to go up eventually it can't go lower right can it that's what we've been saying for three years i know it literally the last year. Year. no they can't go lower and now they're at two and a half percent now they literally are lower <laughs> quite a bit I mean, four right, points so, lower from three years ago. Ryan Bocro stems in. He says 3.25%. So he agrees with Clayton. I think it's going to be like 2.99 to maybe 3.1 is my guess. Up a little bit, but not dramatic. All right. So what's the driver for that? Why is it going up? Inflation. Yes. <laughs> oh, you believe that the unemployment numbers will continue to, to get better? And that they'll have no choice but to raise the rates to prevent inflation. And because, go ahead. No, go ahead, Tim. You, you said two things, right? The Fed raises rates for employment and inflation. And with all this, yeah. that's the one thing I think that's going to actually keep values good is inflation because they're dumping so much money in right now, trillions and trillions of dollars into the country that I I don't see how you don't have some inflation mm -hmm. which will actually help values over the long term but may be the one thing that raises rates but i agree with melissa i don't think i think it's political suicide to do anything that would raise rates and i know the president or you know they don't control the rates but you know what i mean like, i i don't think anybody's going to raise the rates but i don't see how they go any lower you can tweet about it and it changes stuff <laughs> yeah that's yeah. true the new I, guy, I'm not I kidding he, uh, i don't know if he remembers that twitter exists yeah. <laughs> okay. What would you say, Lindsay? I'm laughing. I also think that um, lowering interest rates are one of the only real levers that we have to pull if more ish hits the fan. So I think we have to go up a little bit in order to absorb if something worse happens, that we still have a lever to pull to stimulate the economy to keep moving and the market to keep moving. If we're at you know, 2.5 right now. I mean, are we, we're going to be Bob Tompkins at one if that happens. Right. And that's really scary. So I think that they have to, I guess, pad it a little bit just in case something were to happen that requires pulling that trigger again to stimulate things and get them moving. Ryan Booker says inflation, but not because of low unemployment. It'll be because of another QE and influx of government spending. Quantitative yeah, easing with QE, which uh, just Google it. Uh, Melissa Mara agrees with you, Lindsay. So inflation could be the key driver, you know, to define inflation for uh, what what people, I guess, the com the common man that's watching this, which was what I was until I researched inflation. Because if you've never like looked it up, you just know like, oh, that's when prices go up. But why do prices go up, right? So the Fed lowers rates, and he lowers the rate to borrow borrow money, and so now businesses can go borrow money and buy stuff. Well, when businesses borrow money and can go buy more things, that's great. That means you could buy a ton of things, right? To just go out and spend your money because, hey, money's super cheap. Buy as much as you need for your business. You're, low, you're um, uh, borrowing, I almost said renting the money, which is kind of true. You're renting the money at a really low rate uh, to pay back. And so you can buy more and more stuff. And then we all do that. Well, now the producers of these things are already at near full employment. They're already at capacity and the only trigger or lever they have to move in order to slow those orders is to raise their price, mm -hmm. supply and demand. So they raise the price. That's the definition of inflation. When you can borrow money at a lower rate and then the price starts to go up because you can buy all these things. So if that happens, that's when you're seeing the full unemployment also take place at the same time, because until those companies are at full capacity, are they probably going to just start increasing their price without being at full capacity? I don't know. They might, given the whole COVID situation. I think that's what we'll wait and see. 
but I think they're kind of going to move at the same time. So I also think the rates will probably tick up from where they are now. But mainly, I think the driver is going to be the better economy. We were already set up for a really great economy before this thing hit. Now that it has hit, I think the economy is going to be just as good. But I think more people are efficient. More businesses are efficient at what they do and how they're running. And so I think that may slow some of the um, employee hiring and may push the prices up faster, which would be an interesting conundrum if the prices go up faster before the unemployment rate goes back down to that four, four and a half percent that we were at. So we consider full employment about four and a half to six percent. Um, really, it's been down to four and a half or five percent in the years past, and they've considered that full employment. So and what are we at now? We're at six something, right? Uh, let's see. I can I can check that while you give your prediction. But I think it's probably going to tick back up. You know, some of you said 2.9, 2.89. It's at 2.5 now. I, so I'd probably be comfortable. I don't think it's going to tick up much. I think it's going to be a conservative number. So I'm going to go with 2.75. All right. And Marley, have you gone yet? No. Um, I think it's going to be like 2.95. Damn it. She stole mine. <laughs> I was going to say 2.97, but five sounds good. You going over or under, Dan? 2.96, Bob. <laughs> One dollar, <laughs> one dollar. Uh, but no, I totally agree with that. I just because I think up is inevitable with whatever happens with COVID. There's a huge push by Americans to get back to work. There's just people going, look, I, I, I can't afford to not be here, so I'm going to work. I don't care what uh, governor's orders are saying, you know. And this isn't just California, but I don't care. I'm going to open my doors and I'm going to do this. So more people go back to work, and then we'll just have to figure out the safety part of it. Uh, and the, the eating inside while outside, wait, you can eat outside as long as right. it's inside outside. Does that make sense? Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I think there'll be a push. So I think they'll have to go up. And then like Tim said, the inflation, uh, with some QE, I'll just throw in some QE. I don't know what it means, but I'll throw in some QE. Uh, easy, baby. Let's get it. But I think they'll stay under three and around the 2.96, right at 2.96. 2.96. Okay. Y'all are both going to be so upset if it's 2.97. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be sad because that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll give her extra credit. If it hits 2.97, we'll give it to her. That's yeah. Right. Thank you. So you the know. winner of last year is chiming in. Kevin Benziger. One he point. says 1.9. Wow. Kevin. He's bold, man. I love it. We totally poo-pooed you last year, but you won. Uh, you were within 0.4% of where it is now. So. Which we all said under three, dude. Come on. Come on. Now he's going under two. I don't know. I'm not. I'm I'm in. I'm in with Bob at 1%. I'm in. <laughs> Let's go all the way. Yeah. Free money. <laughs>